Hello electrifiers. They do say, don't they, that doing anything by committee is a very bad thing. But this car proves that theory wrong. How? Well, you're going to have to wait for the answer to that one before I give you the lowdown on the Polestar Synergy electric fantasy supercar. Don't forget to like, subscribe and come and visit us over at electrifying.com because nobody knows electric cars quite like we do. So at Electrifying, we are all about helping you choose the right electric car for you and then helping you with the practicalities of living with one. But sometimes we like to let her hair down and have a bit of fun. Not be quite so sensible. And that is where this car comes in. The Polestar Synergy Electric Fantasy Supercar. Even its name is utterly brilliant, isn't it? Now this, this is what happens when the designers of the car company have a few too many espressos and get all creative. And we absolutely love it. Right then, let's get that committee thing out of the way, shall we? You see, the Synergy isn't just one design, it is actually three, honestly. So Polestar ran a design competition for 600 designers, telling them they needed to come up with a car that embodied performance. It also needed to be technical and sustainable, which is a pretty broad brief, if you ask me. Anyway, they came up with it all, and from 600 designs, they whittled it down to the best 10. And then they loved three of them just so much, they decided to meld them together. And this is the full-size creation. So the outside is a mashup of two different exterior designs and the inside is one. It's a two-seat interior reworked to have just one central seat. And you'd just never tell that this was three different designs, would you? Just take a look at it. Let me explain that one. Now, with each of those three designs came a story and inspiration. So one of the exterior designers was inspired by the shape of hammerhead sharks. The other was keen on emotional durability. Not exactly sure that was. Uh, but also materials that would age gracefully over time. You know, more technical stuff. While the interior designer delved into the idea of floating comfort and control. So there is a lot more to this car than just loads of cool shapes flung together with some lovely materials. It's an amalgamation of three brilliant ideas. And I'll leave it to you to spot the hammerhead. I mean, this thing really does look like a Le Mans hypercar without the sponsorship stickers, doesn't it? And it's got so many incredible aerodynamic elements to it. So let's take a look at a few of them, shall we? Right at the front, you've got that tarmac scraping front bumper with intakes that flow out through the extended wheel arches at the side. You can even see the suspension through the cutouts. How cool is that? Then you can see the channels in the side skirts that flow right through the back of the car. And of course, the rear spoiler. And I just love the fact that this is all in just one piece. It all flows together wonderfully. And also, it's a really elegant piece of design. Now, for me, the interesting thing about the Synergy is despite it being so fantastical and out there, it still looks like a Polestar, right? If you look at Polestar's other cars, like their next one, this car, the three, you can definitely see that family resemblance. The Synergy makes me look like a giant, doesn't it? And that hardly ever happens with cars. And that's because it's very, very low, just over three and a half feet tall, and just over 15 feet long though. And the reason it can be this low is because it doesn't have proper doors. So there's a canopy at the front that flips up and moves forward, a bit like a fighter jet. Unfortunately, nobody can find the keys to it, or at least that's what they're telling me. Anyway. Another reason it can be this slinky is because obviously it is fully electric. So it doesn't need to package a big engine and a drivetrain. Nobody has said anything about real specs yet for this, but it would be safe to assume that Polestar could potentially put together a dual motor drivetrain and 100 plus kilowatt hour battery. You see the Polestar 6 is already 860 odd brake horsepower. So I reckon you could just pick a number and get performance to match. Do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if we see this at Le Mans one day. 
One thing that I really love about the Synergy is the lighting. Um, so you've got these exaggerated twin blades at the front, immediately make you think Polestar, but I love the way in this one they arc up over the wheel arches, which makes them look really special. And that rear brake light is something else, the way it sits under the rear spoiler with little indicators in the corners. Somehow the whole thing manages to make the Synergy look light and it also enhances this lovely low stance that it's got. I think they are one of the triumphs of this car, personally. Once you do get inside, there are three layers to the interior. So you sit in a single seat with Polestar's gorgeous gold seat belts in front of a cut-down yoke instead of a steering wheel. There's a proper dashboard in front that shows all the car's information. Then biometric information about the driver is displayed on the steering system in a second layer. So the car knows your heart rate, where you're looking, that sort of thing. Info about the battery is shown on the sides of the cockpit. So state of charge and temperatures are where you can always see them. And then there's a kind of built-in augmented reality visor that sits in front of your eyes that gives other info about tracks and driver aids. I do hope the seat is going to be adjustable though because from the look of it, I'd never be able to see all that. Now, Polestar has a goal of being a climate neutral company by 2040. And that means getting rid of all the greenhouse gas emissions from across the whole company, um, along with different phases of the car's life cycle. So it's also said that it wants to create a cradle-to-grave climate-neutral car by 2030. And that is a really big deal, given that electric cars do produce more emissions in their production than petrol or diesel cars. So in order for them to be fully sustainable, car makers really need to start giving a lot more thought to their manufacturing and supply chains. Which, funnily enough, is why we created the Electrifying.com Green Hero Award which we give to manufacturers we believe are doing great work in this area. So the big question, and yes, it will be real. It will be a production car. How brilliant is that? But, yeah, there's always a but, isn't there? That production car is going to be about, I don't know, seven or eight centimetres long, and it will fit in the palm of your hand because the only way you're going to be able to buy the Synergy is as a Hot Wheels model. I mean, technically, you would still own a Synergy of your very own. You just might struggle a bit to drive it, but you would still be able to look at it, and it is a very beautiful thing to look at. So you have probably guessed that I love this car, even though, sadly, it's not going to be on my drive or yours anytime soon, even if we could afford it. But one thing I really love about electric cars is that they have given the car industry a bit of a shock. They're changing the way we think about cars and the way they're designed. You know, after not really changing the recipe for what, a century, we're now rethinking how they look, how they function, how they're made, what they do. The synergy might not be real, but it's got so much creativity and ideas in it, and it makes me really excited for the future. And that is a very good thing. And if electric cars are your thing, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and switch your notifications on. Because if you're into electric cars, this is the place to be.